With so much talk of healthy foods and what you should be eating, the foods that are the worst for us can get overlooked. The reason it's so hard to avoid these kinds of foods is because the things that make them bad also make them taste good. Fatty foods typically taste good, so do sweet and salty ones, which means a lot of the foods you love are likely not the best things you can have. But you don't have to resort to living like Tom Hanks and Castaway. There are plenty of foods that you can turn to that taste amazing and won't jeopardize your well-being. It's about learning why certain foods are bad so you can make better choices on a day-to-day -day basis. That being said, here are some dietary landmines to watch out for and step around. A new study published in the journal Preventing Chronic Disease revealed that 84% of packaged foods that listed zero grams trans fat on their nutrition facts label still had partially hydrogenated oil, the main dietary source of trans fat, in the ingredient list. Current laws allow companies to round down fewer than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving to zero. The good news? The amount of trans fat we eat has dropped in the past 30 years, according to a recent study published in the Journal of the American Heart Association. Men are consuming 32% less trans fat and women 35% less than they were in 1980. Still, 1.9% of men's daily calories and 1.7% of women's daily calories come from trans fat today. The American Heart Association recommends limiting trans fat to no more than 1% of total calories consumed. Even a few daily grams of these fats increase bad cholesterol, decrease good cholesterol, and clog arteries. And Harvard researchers estimate that trans fats cause up to 228,000 cases of heart disease and 50,000 deaths annually. Since 2 grams is the most you should have in a day, allowing food with 0.5 grams or less to call themselves trans fat free is a real problem. Simply said, you're best off avoiding trans fat containing foods completely. I'll also show you some quick examples of food rich in trans fat that you might not even be aware of. The first is non-dairy coffee creamer. Half a gram of trans fat in creamer can quickly turn into multiple since consumers tend to use more than the serving size of a teaspoon per cup. And the typical American coffee drinker guzzles an average of three cups of joe per day. On many zero trans fat labels, you can find partially hydrogenated oils as the second or third ingredient listed. The second one is peanut butter. Some companies use partially hydrogenated oils to achieve a long shelf life and creamy texture, so check the label. To be safe, opt for the natural variety. Although it's chunkier, it's also healthier and normally made with just salt and peanuts, not oils loaded with trans fat. You might think that avoiding usual pizza is good, but frozen pizza is equally bad. Trans fat sneaks into the dough of many frozen pizzas, with about 0.3 grams in just one slice. San Diego mother of two, Katie Simpson, sued Nestle for $5 million last year over the use of trans fat in its frozen pizzas sold by DiGiorno, Stouffer's, and California Pizza Kitchen. The case was dismissed since she knowingly purchased and consumed the pizza. One solution? Make your own pie at home. Popcorn's unhealthy as well. I know it's your Friday night movie staple, but microwavable popcorn puts the spotlight on trans fats. The true culprits are the toppings. Butter flavoring can include 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving, while caramel flavoring can contain as many as 1.5 grams. Some extra buttery varieties can have up to 15 grams of trans fats per bag, which is all too easy to inhale in one sitting. Stay away from the microwave popcorn, says Napoli. Just do the old-fashioned air pop or use an actual oil to pop the kernels in. You might love them, but packaged cookies are the devils. Even the beloved Girl Scout cookies still sneak some trans fat in, despite a label that says trans fat free. You may be able to justify those because they only happen a few times a year, but check to see if your favorite store-bought cookies are made with partially hydrogenated cooking oils. Chances are, they are, including Chips Ahoy and Keebler, although some brands like Oreos now use high oleic oils instead so they can provide shelf-stable cookies at a reasonable cost. Lastly, margarine. Margarine consumption boomed during the butter shortages of World War II, with even Eleanor Roosevelt promoting it as her toast topping of choice. But it's a recipe for trans fat overload. To create the creamy spread, liquid vegetable oils are blasted with hydrogen. The more solid the margarine, the more it's been hydrogenated. Many labels claim to have zero grams of trans fat, but if the label lists partially hydrogenated oils, those small amounts of trans fat can add up when you slather margarine on your food. High fructose corn syrup, or HFCS, is an ingredient that didn't exist before 1960, but has a strong appeal to food manufacturers because it's so very sweet, cheap to make, and easy to store. According to David Zinzenko in The Abs Diet, the human body doesn't have a shutoff switch for HFCS the way it does with real sugar. 
This leads us to keep drinking a cola or eating sweet treats long after we would have stopped if they were naturally sweetened. Those who pay attention to what they eat may have noticed high fructose corn syrup creeping into an alarming number of foods in the supermarket aisle. Corn subsidies and other trends have pushed this relatively unhealthy substance into many of the general food groups that we shop for on a regular basis. Here are some of the popular food and drink items that contain high fructose corn syrup, an element with a lot of sugar that has been known to contribute to diabetes and other conditions when eaten in excess. Soft drinks are packed with HFCS. It's no surprise to most of us that soda is chock full of high fructose corn syrup. To those who aren't used to the drink, the stuff can be almost sickeningly sweet. Even diet varieties can have a large amount of this sweetener. Add the fact that soda machines can be found on the street corner, in the lobbies of buildings, and in almost any public space, and it's easy to see why obesity and sugar-related conditions are such a problem in today's world. Also, sauces and salad dressing will hurt your waistline. Most ketchup ends up on french fries, and few stop to consider that it's actually acting to make the fries unhealthier. That's because it uses high fructose corn syrup as its number three ingredient, at least in a bottle of America's number one best-selling ketchup, Heinz. There's four grams of total sugar, and the majority of that will come from HFCS. You might think yogurt is good, but you're dead wrong. Although many dieters add yogurt to their daily menu, they'd better watch out at the sweeteners it contains, with many of the brands using high fructose corn syrup to make them taste good. Going with a light version of yogurt no doubt means you're getting an artificial sweetener, which can be just as bad. Pay extra attention to processed snacks, too. There are other items that the average consumer wouldn't think of as HFCS candidates. Look at the labels for things like breaded meats or processed potato items, and make sure that the sweetener is not lurking somewhere on that label. Monosodium glutamate, also known as MSG, is a commonly used food enhancer whose taste is described as umami-like. Taste is usually divided into four categories, sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Glutamate is said to have a fifth unique taste called umami, which is described as the savory flavor of meats. MSG is used to enhance this so-called umami flavor and is known to have negative side effects even when ingested in small amounts. Since MSG is found so frequently in processed foods, it is very hard to avoid, except in cases when the packaging specifically states that the product contains no MSG. Even then, manufactured free glutamic acid can be found in different forms, such as torula yeast. MSG, torula yeast, yeast extracts, and hydrolyzed proteins can raise levels of glutamate, which in turn overstimulates neurons. Synthetically produced glutamates may have different names, but are all essentially MSG. Some common glutamates strongly related to MSG include hydrolyzed proteins, autolyzed yeasts, protein concentrates, yeast extract, glutamic acid, and the list goes on. These glutamates can be found in very common grocery items such as low-fat yogurt, canned soups, chips, and most ranch and cheese-flavored foods. In a 2014 study published in Life Science, researchers found that young rats treated with MSG were more susceptible to developing anxiety and depressive behaviors. Examples of food rich in MSG are vegan breakfast sausage, bacon bits, veggie burger and nuggets, and fried food. Walk into any big grocery store and you'll find that artificial sweeteners are everywhere. They're tucked into soft drinks, baked goods, and fruit juices to make them taste sweet without the extra calories. Most products that contain artificial sweeteners are usually labeled as diet or reduced sugar, but not all are. You can even find some in foods that claim to have natural ingredients. Because they're not always clearly labeled on food packaging, consumers may not realize that they're eating them. Artificial sweeteners have been under the spotlight for decades now, as health food advocates point out that they come with a list of side effects, much like a drug. The side effects that are claimed by those against sweeteners like aspartame include some really severe conditions, such as depression, insomnia, blindness, tinnitus, hives, and a contributing factor to things like Alzheimer's and MS. Examples of foods rich in artificial sweeteners are light food and beverages with the word light or low sugar, diet coke, and packaged snacks. High levels of sodium, or salt, can really wreak havoc on your body. Not only does it cause you to retain water, but it also increases blood pressure and can lead to complications with the heart. Almost all heart patients are put on a low-sodium diet, whether they suffered a heart attack, stroke, or are at risk for them. It makes sense to watch your sodium levels long before it reaches the point of a doctor telling you to do so or forcing you onto a diet to help save your life. Foods high in sodium are cheese, salty snacks, frozen meals, bread, and tortillas. Foods high in calories can really add to your waistline in a hurry if you're not careful. 
The reason they're so sneaky is because you can consume hundreds of calories quickly and not even be aware of it. A popular dieting theory is that the fewer calories taken in, the more weight you'll lose, all else being equal. That's why you see people going on low calorie diets and trying to burn calories in the gym. You don't have to go to extremes, but minding the calories you consume will lead to a healthier you. Examples of food choices high in calories are pasta dishes, chocolate, and chia seeds. It's not as if you have to go low carb or no carb, but you should still keep an eye on your carbohydrate intake. In fact, there's even a recommended daily allowance set at 130 grams. Why are too many carbs unhealthy? Foods high in carbohydrates will be digested quickly and tend to increase your blood sugar levels. This causes a release of insulin, which produces glycogen, which gets stored in the body as fat. They're also responsible for making you feel hungry again quickly and can lead to more eating and overeating than would otherwise happen. Examples are bagels, coffee drinks, and movie popcorn. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.